This is Bessie. This is Pat. Pat. Pat, who drives Bessie, looks after Bessie. Uh huh. Sure. And I'm Ethna, I'm the manager, the manager in the LAN, is the LAN, Lar on it Aquini Nadraha. It's a community based organisation with charitable status and it has grown, evolved, I suppose, since 2003. And it really was, the, it really added on to community attempts to, um, to protect this site and what was left of the site. This site would have been originally an eight acre site, uh, industrial site for tomato houses. It was made up of four, Fort. four. Two acre glass four, four two acre glass houses yeah. established um, to serve the early markets uh, in Dublin with tomatoes. Yeah. The glass houses were all heated, huge pipes were going round uh, through all the glass houses and uh, when the oil crisis came, so obviously that we see the impact of oil again in rural communities. Uh, 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 impacted the closed overnight. This site was probably chosen because of its proximity to the, to the sea and a frost free area that you wouldn't have as much frost here um, and it would have been established in the late 60s, early 60s, early 60s. Where we were perhaps in the early 60s, employed maybe 30, um, 35 full time people, rising, bringing that up to, th to 60, um, 65 during the summer. So it was a huge impact in this area. People still refer to the glass houses as Kalalt. We have a number of various names at the moment and there's probably very few families in this area that didn't have somebody who worked in here or knew of somebody working here. Uh, we grow, we've built up uh, over the last, I suppose since 2003, since the company was set up, built up a, a local clientele. And um, we serve three main markets. We serve the local retail shops. We also serve the um, support the food industry, food tourism industry, so we do, healthy eating. Um, and the other area that we develop, uh, have developed is um, box games, which is in, in, with individual locals, individuals who live locally. They put in, we sent out an ordering system on a Monday. We tell all three sectors what's available and they specifically order for their needs and they come and pick it up, so they do. We do a wide range of stuff from start to the potatoes. Every, all Irish people love their spuds. We do a wide range of spuds. Uh, do to unusual vegetables, um, to common vegetables. Uh, we, try, we trial different crops every year. We change as the year goes on, depending on taste, our taste change. Very, we, at the moment, one of our main, I suppose, is the mixed leaves. Mixed leaves. Mixed leaves, tomatoes, tomatoes and, potatoes. and potatoes. Very, very popular, so they are. My name is Veronica Magnuti. Uh, I am head horticulturist down in uh, Land CTR. Uh, I'm as well a head beekeeper and I'm horticultural manager for EIP. Uh, how I come here? Uh, I come here originally from Slovakia, but it was 13 years ago. Um, I got dragged down with my family and I decided to stay after I married Irish, uh, Irish fella and that definitely made me stay down here. In uh, Land CTR, we are trying to grow uh, vegetable naturally. Uh, we don't use chemicals. We are using uh, good old um, uh, manure. We are using seaweed. We are using uh, green manure, what you can see growing behind me. Uh, we are using other plants materials, uh, like we are using nitro for nitrogen liquid. We are using uh, comfrey for potash. Uh, we are using seaweed for trace elements. Um, everything in here is chemical free and everything is fresh as can get. My name is Mel Gavin. I work for IT Sligo. IT Sligo are contracted as mentors by SEAI on the Sustainable Energy Community Programme. So we shortened that to SEC. It's, it's the SEC programme. The SEC programme supports communities all across the country that are uh, in a position to create a more sustainable energy infrastructure in their community. So there are over 300 SECs on the network at the moment, and the plan in the Climate Action Plan is to grow that to 1,500 by 2030. So we're, we're going to see a significant growth in this program, and it's about leading the energy transition at a community level. And we need people in the community to actually make that happen. It can't simply be done centrally. So. I've been working as a mentor on the programme, and one of many mentors on the programme. I've been working in the border region and in Dublin with communities like this one here in Kilult. So Ethna and her colleague Sean and a few of the other colleagues here, they joined the network and I've been working with them to increase their capacity, their understanding of how energy has worked, how, how, how we use it, how much it costs, what the impacts are. And really, the, the, I've been able to leverage Ethna's network here because they're an organic producer, 
they supply the local area, they, they seem to know everyone in the local area, um, and they have a great network. So with Aetna, I've been running energy clinics here. We've been informing homeowners, businesses, other organizations, what their options are, what's the best thing for them to look at in terms of an energy upgrade. Last year, in a, 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 a county-wide project that was being led by Donegal County Council, we got two, two local facilities into uh, an energy upgrade project there. That was a family resource centre in Falcara and a private shop in Falcara. And they got lighting upgrades and heating upgrades to help reduce their costs. And they got some grant funding towards that. Um, right now, the team here are completing an energy master plan for the wider community in this area. That energy master plan gives an understanding of how energy is used right now, how much it costs, what the CO2 impacts of, of that are, and it also includes a register of opportunities for projects to do over the next few years to reduce those costs and to reduce those impacts. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. Within the glass houses itself, there isn't a huge amount of energy used. There is a great use here of solar energy in terms of growing uh, produce that you couldn't grow here otherwise. Um, but we are looking at opportunities within the glass houses to use heat pumps, air source heat pumps, to create um, hot water, or possibly solar panels for hot water. We've looked into the potential for local deliveries with electric vehicles, and it will work. There's just commercial aspects, commercial challenges to that right now, but it will work, and at some point in the future, that will be a better option, because you're talking about delivering high volume but low weight produce into the local region. So and it's not massive uh, distances either, so an electric vehicle will be a solution at some point in the future. This community group has struggled for years to find their place and with a long-term strategy. I think that we all, all have to understand that the wheel goes round. Global, the global reports and global changes are dictating the pace from the top down to little groups like this and our groups like this and their impact into biodiversity, into cultural development and into formulating what's happening in the world around, starting from here locally. The time has come. They always say, Chucky Arla, Arla, Ta Arla, Taika. This is the time for this project to flourish.